Hello, and welcome to Bad At Board Games. Here we go, at the top of the class on a roll. I'm Brad Blake. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the... And I'm Bad At Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today is... Feel like you're in Hawaii or Panama Day. You can tell by the hat and the shirt, because it's cold here. Yes, it's very, very cold, so I'm trying to pretend that it's not cold. But that's not why you're here. You're here to find out what my top 40 of all time are, and we're going from 30 to 21 or something like that. So let's get at it. What is number 30? Number 30, where'd it go? There it is. This is a new game. Came out, and I've got about four plays of this in, and it's jumped up on my list. I really am enjoying it. So Mind Management is a hidden movement game. It's really being pushed by Board Game Co. and Quackalope and a couple of the others. I think even Table Knots has really enjoyed this game. So I'm not sure my group is as into this as they are. I think the one downside to Mind Management and probably hidden movement as a mechanic in general is everybody's kind of got to be into it and like it. Uh, we had a really good game last night. I really enjoyed it. Took longer, but I think it was the analysis paralysis of the group. And so it, it took longer. This is like a 45 minute to 60 minute game. I think it took us close to an hour and 45 minutes. They won, which was cool. And they had the, the cool um, upgraded packs and things. And I think that's what I really want to try to get into. I recommend if you're gonna try this, open up some packs, just start with like three packs for the people that are trying to find the recruiter. And then if the recruiter loses, start opening up one pack after another. Because you can, the way that they do a catch up mechanic is powers and abilities. So you're psychic people against other psychic people. And it, it really ends up being interesting that way. I like the little comic book that comes with it. If you read each pack, it has a comic book and tells you kind of the whole part of what's going on with that pack's upgrade. So my number 30, sure I got that right? Yep, mind management, check it out. But just make sure you have a group that likes hidden movement stuff. Otherwise you'll probably be forcing them down, forcing this down their throat, kind of like that. Yeah. Sorry guys. This next one is hilarious, and you'll probably be like, Bleh. from the people who brought you cats. Throw throw burrito. This is funny. This game is hilarious. You throw these little cushy guys at your opponents, and it's just fun. I don't care how old you are, as long as you can run around the house or run around outside, this game is a fun 20, 30 minutes. You'll probably play it more than once. So maybe 40 minutes of enjoyment. And if you have teenagers, adults, I saw the, at Gen Con, I saw this. Once again, I'm back to Gen Con. Uh, people running around at the hotel trying not to get hit by one of these burritos. So this game is fun. Don't just uh, write it off, but it's standing up around the table you're passing cards really quick, and once you get a certain pair, I can't remember if it's two or three of these, then it's grab the burrito and throw it at somebody, or you get a duel, and then you walk 10 paces and then turn around and throw it. So some fun things like that. That is my number 29 with a bullet. Well, not a bullet. I've had this <laughs> since it came out, but it's probably very surprising. I've never seen this in, on anybody's top list. Throw, throw, burrito. And now we go from probably as light as you can get to maybe as heavy as you can get. It's literally the heaviest game I have. And I mean heavy because it weighs a ton. Why does it weigh a ton? Because I got all of the inserts for it. Look, it's as much fun to put together the inserts as it is play the game, said nobody ever. Look at these. You get to put all your little chits in things and have little boxes and stuff. It's great. Gloomhaven. 
the game that you love and the game that you hate because it sits on the shelf and you didn't play over half of it. I don't know about you, maybe you are the exception. But when I had this out on the table, I probably had it out for about three months. We got about 10% through it, I would say. We've unlocked three or four characters, so maybe that's more than 10%. This is, this is a good game. It, my problem with campaigns is, I think with, like with any campaign, just feeling like I didn't get everything out of it because I never got to finish it. So one bias that you will see on my channel for me versus Toph is that I shy away from campaign games mainly because anytime I've done a campaign, whether it's in Warhammer 40K or anything, it's like herding cats. You can't get people together. Now, maybe if you have a Dungeons and Dragons group, that could work. However, this is the board game version of Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is better. Uh, if you don't have anybody to play with, Gloomhaven, you can you can solo this. Jaws of the Lion, I haven't played that, but I've got the full version. I didn't need like a light intro version um, to Gloomhaven. It, it's a great game. Can't can't recommend it enough, honestly. And the price keeps coming down. You don't need everything that I got with all the uh, wooden pieces and the dividers, but it it makes it easy to pull out and and set up. And that is the biggest hurdle of this game is getting it out and setting it up. So anything you can do to reduce your time. However, that I think was over a hundred bucks. So just realize you're paying $120 for the game. If you end up getting the components, you're going to have to spend another hundred and some dollars on that. Maybe it's less now. And then you got to put all that stuff together. That wasn't putting all that and gluing all that together takes time as well. So you kind of got away. Yeah, it's number one on BGG's list. I think rightfully so. I haven't played a game that really is like, oh, they, if you want a Dungeons and Dragons group, this is really as close as you get, in my personal opinion. So if you have the means or you can pick a one up used, even if you play, you know, just a few chapters and you understand how to play the game and unlock a few of the boxes, that's cool. I think a lot of people have started doing that and I don't know who did it first. Oh, I get to unlock a character or unlock something new. So you got this hidden thing that you keep surprising you as you play. And we've done good. I haven't opened them. Um, I want to bring it out and get to it again, but it's still kind of sitting there. It's now become the shelf of shame, the biggest shelf of shame, even though I've played some of it. I don't know if I'll ever get through the whole thing. So just giving you my recommendations on Gloomhaven. Great game. Then we get into a, what I think is a great solo game. Arkham card game. This, this is, this is really nice. Like, I don't do a lot of solo games, but this is nice to be able to pull out. You kind of have that character leveling up um, after you complete a scenario. All it is, your map is the cards that you lay out on the board, and then you're flipping over your cards and pulling out chits out of a bag to see, do you win, do you lose, do you fight? Um, do you die? You die a lot. And you die a lot. <laughs> so, all the Arkham games, you have to get into that mindset of, it's like slamming your head up against a wall. And if you like that, Arkham Horror card games. Arkham Horror anything, except Cthulhu Death May Die. It's not quite as bad as slamming your head up against a brick wall. But if you enjoy that, I can't highly recommend this enough. It's the best banging your head up against the wall. Much fun you'll have ever. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's real. I'm really selling this game, aren't I? All right, that one is number 27. Gloomhaven was number 28. And we're on to number 26. So I apologize, this one you can't get. I can't find this anymore, but this was a great game. And I don't, I'm not big into card and trick taking games. So Gubs by um, Game Right, I believe. Yep. So Game Right makes some cute little games every now and then. I'm really into Super Mega Lucky Box now. That's a Game Right game. 
but gubs is a trick taking game you get to throw spears at other people's little gubs and they're so cute and you get to steal them and um you get these toads and riders and this this is a cute little card game if you ever see it used or you're at an auction or used bookstore or something like that check this out it's it's a fun game and you can play this with about any age uh definitely more of a family game uh, especially if you have boys but and it's not that girls don't don't like these kinds of things either but i've noticed that trying to play this with younger girls is not as much fun boys are like oh that's that's pretty cool it's a cute game it's fun doesn't take very long to play keeps everybody's attention gubs check it out that was number 26 then the next one we have is welcome to so these are a few filler games in this in this range right so not the heaviest games, not the lightest games. You can kind of pull them out and they hit the table. This is probably a good time to talk about my, how am I rating these? So kind of that feeling that you get when you are playing a game combined with how much it allows you to, to think, but also balancing that with how easy is it to get to the table. If it's more fun to play a game with other people than by yourself. Uh, so if you can get a game, if you can get somebody engaged that doesn't normally play games to sit down and play a game with you, that's great. That really, that game is able to bring somebody new into the hobby and allow you to interact with them. And that's really my favorite part about playing games. It's an interaction, right? In some way, shape or form, not complete solitaire. I liked playing Warhammer 40K because I got to sit across from another person. We got to battle it out and talk shit to each other and just enjoy the experience, right? And there's a whole world within that of building and painting and everything that goes beyond just playing the game. Well, board games allow you to sit down with somebody, have a battle one way or the other, um, try to get the most points and win the game. So Welcome To helps you do that. Now this is not it really isn't the easiest teach. It Once it clicks, you get it. There are a bunch of houses in a row and you're gonna have numbers that fill in those rows of houses. You can't, you have to progressively go from one to I think 15 and you can't, if you put a one on the left, everything has to be higher than that on the right. So you don't wanna start with a 15 on the left because then you have no more numbers. So it's how many houses do you get from the lowest to the highest without screwing that up, knowing that you're not gonna see all the numbers come out. And then you can make, let me just show you one of these real quick. I think I wanna get Welcome to the Moon. I think I would just like the theme of Welcome to the Moon a little bit better than this one. But I really had heard a lot of good things about Welcome to Games and wanted to check it out. I got this at Barnes & Noble for about 50 bucks. I would recommend trying to find it a little bit cheaper. I think there are other games better than this at this price point, but if you want to check out Welcome To, it, they're good games. I I liked it. I, you know, it's kind of one of those prove me wrong kind of things, so I wanted to pick it up and see if oh, everybody's full of it. Yeah, they weren't. This is this is good. However, it's sitting at number 25, so got a lot of games I like better than this. But I can, I can pull this out and teach it to a bunch of people. The first game is frustrating for people. Just be prepared for that. Might be frustrating for you too. I was kind of like, eh, but I think this is one of those mechanics. Once you learn it, it'll apply to every Welcome To game that's out there. So next, more new games, more Gen Con games. Dinosaur World. So Dinosaur Island came out and I thought that is the dumbest knockoff of Jurassic World, Jurassic Park that I've ever seen. I'm gonna move the mic a little bit. Okay, um, this came out and I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. I really like that board. I really like how it looks on the table. And I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna kickstart it. I'm not gonna pre-order it. And then at Gen Con, kept seeing people play this. I'm like, I go up and I, I really like the board presence. This is a giant game. This takes up a ton of table space. But the blues and all the colors, and I like table presence. That really draws me in to enjoy a game. And I like Jurassic Park, and as I started looking at this and you're getting the 
DNA and building and having your tableau and moving your Jeep around, you, you have to make these decisions. It's not just, I get to build all this stuff and get all these points and there's, there's mechanics in it that kind of slow you down and they can, they might be frustrated. I know Tom Vassell's not a huge fan of this, especially the Jeep movement, but I think the Jeep movement brings it home because you you can't just do anything you want and you have to plan out things and that's kind of a limiter for you, for you being able to just point salad the hell out of this game. So I like it. It is not easy to get to the table. So take that into consideration. Dinosaur World, my number 24. Beautiful table presence, pretty cool stuff. One of my first videos, I'll link it down below. I like doing it. It probably doesn't sound great. <laughs> I don't know if it looks great, um, but you might want to check that out just to, to have a laugh versus how much better these sound, how much better the lighting looks and all that. So number 24, Dinosaur World. Let's see, where are we gonna put that? We're gonna put that over there. Now, the next one, everybody talks about this one. This is not gonna be a surprise, except I put it down. So, Azul. I like Azul. These are, I like games that I can play with my girlfriend and she's getting into heavier and heavier games as we go. But this was definitely one of our first games that we kind of clicked on. She was into word games and Scrabble and Monopoly. And so I tried like code names and some other things like that that were word based and it just kept falling flat, falling flat. When we played this, it was like, this game is fun at two people. This game is cutthroat at two people. This is a blast. When you take that tile and then somebody else has to take five tiles and they drop down to the bottom and get all those negative points, yeah, that's fun. And she likes doing it to me and I like doing it to her. <laughs> and it's very cutthroat. As soon as you play it with three people, you know, it's not as cutthroat, but this is a fun game. The weight of the tiles is extremely nice. This, this was a surprise to me. I kind of thought like, oh yeah, it's a target and you get that gamer snob thing going on but this is a lot of fun i i don't have the the upgraded stained glass ones and stuff i'm thinking about maybe getting sagrada but this is fine for me i don't need anything beyond this um you might be the i love azul i have to have everything that goes along with azul that's awesome but this does it for me i don't need another game of, of this type or other versions of it we've just not gotten tired of it and it's easy to pull out play 30 minutes probably less sometimes and i've not had anybody not like it so it it really deserves to be one of the top games i can't say enough about azul uh it's not number one but it's number 20 number 23 so the next game i don't own tope owns and it's at number 23 and it's called evolution and that game is really cutthroat and a lot of fun and i do like take that games and cutthroat games so you play as evolving dinosaurs coming out of the primarial ooze i guess and you get dealt cards and you play these cards and then you have to eat and there's a little pile of food in the middle that allows you to eat and you can be a um, a carnivore, which means you get to eat other players' <laughs> dinosaurs, um, or you can be plant-based. And so, and then there's de defensive cards. So you may be flying. So unless the predator that's trying to eat you has flying, they can't eat you. So there's these different aspects of the card. It, it goes in about 20, we had four players and I, I love it at four players. Now, you have to be with a group that likes take that, likes to eat people because you're gonna hurt. You're going to make somebody feel bad when you, they have their like, oh, I've got this defense and I've got this animal and they're eating and gaining a lot of points and you play a carnivore, you finally get a carnivore card on your flying guy and you go and eat theirs. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> Not everybody will like you for doing it though. So um, make sure you have a good group of friends and you know, some people just won't won't play that way. I, Toph has a other game group where they're not aggressive at all. Like they would not even play the carnivore card to come over and, and play the game and win. So you have to understand your game group. You have to understand the people you're playing with before you uh, try out evolution. I loved it. It's number 24 
and we're moving on. <laughs> oh no, I didn't get that right. It's number 22. Hey. <laughs> number 21 and the end of this list from 30 to 21. What could it be? Could it be another game from Gen Con? It's possible. You are so smart. The Hunger from Richard Garfield. So if you remember on my last list, the top one, he did that game too. You should go check that out. Links down below. What was my uh, number 31? This is number 21. He made both of these games. He, he makes good games. What can I say? He made Magic the Gathering. So I don't play that anymore, but I used to. I really wish I would have had the Lotus. I didn't play it that early, but that would have been cool. Um, the Hunger, push your luck game, mini deck builder. So you don't, you're not getting tons and tons of cards by the end of the game, but you're going out and you're feasting on humans and there's a track that you move out and further and further away from the castle. If you don't make it back to the castle, you die. You get to count points just for the fun of it, but you're dead, you're out of the game. So you're racing out and racing back with your deck. The instructions on this are kind of garbage. It's really easy game, and I don't know how they made the instructions so difficult to un make something so easy. Uh, they overcomplicated it. It's, it's just flip a card over, the number on the card tells you how far you go out, and then that's it. And you can eat with the leftovers. So I have a I have another link down below. It kind of walks you through it if you want to check out, just look at the hunger and it. I've got some pictures up on how the mechanics work. It's simple, but I found the instructions. Now granted, the first time I tried to play it, it was at midnight at Gen, Gen Con, once again. And um, we just didn't have the mental capacity at that time. But at the time, I just it's still, it's just like, they could have made this. This could have been a one page instruction sheet and it's not. So. Number 21, this game's fun. You, this is a gateway-ish middle game. You can, you can teach anybody this game. Now, whether they're gonna like it or not, that's different. A lot of gateway games, you know, everybody's just like, oh, it doesn't matter who you put in front of a gateway game. So this is kind of like, like getting them away from gateway games into that medium weight game. And it's a medium weight game that anybody can kind of learn. So we bring this out anytime we have somebody new at, the game group that shows up. This is definitely one of our go-tos. We have a couple of others, but that's why it is number 21. One, it's fun. I like it. I like the theme. I like the vampires. As you get fatter with feeding on the humans and then you're racing back to the castle, you get more humans coming out when you're flipping your cards instead of vampire cards, which slow you down because you're getting all fat and, and stuff and you can't make it back. And you're like, oh, I'm so slow. I got, I'm so full of blood. <laughs> so. Take that, that push your luck aspect, that am I gonna go out for, far enough or I'm gonna work my way back or I'm, I'm gonna turtle and just kind of stay in a couple of areas and, and float back and forth. Um, got real close in one of our last games. I was one space away from making it to safety and I, I didn't quite make it, but hey, that's what it's about. That's, that's the, the last minute. Can you kick somebody else out of the safe area and push them back? backwards and then they die and you don't um it's a fun game check it out look at some reviews online i think this is even though it's by richard garfield and it had some hype i think it's kind of flown under the radar you know not everybody talks about it on all the youtube channels and such and i've seen kind of a resurgence of them i think the marketing pushing this probably paying a few youtubers to discuss it and go over it but i like it i i I haven't found anybody who really doesn't like it and we've played it multiple times and it's not like it's gotten old so you're not going to want to play this you know 10 times in a month but you can consistently keep bringing this out and be like this is a fun cute game um medium weight good to go all right we're at 25 minutes i know i dinked around at the beginning so hopefully after this is edited at the beginning and the end the stuff you don't see we're going to be around 20 minutes again Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. I like doing this. It's just kind of fun to sit around and talk. Hopefully I looked at the camera enough and not too much at my phone. I know I kind of dart around and, uh, and all that kind of weird stuff, but meh, this is what it is. Thanks for joining me. Got any comments? Link them down below. 
What are some of your top games? What are games, have you played any of these? Let me know. I'd be curious to know, have you, did you get Gloomhaven? Is it on your shelf of shame or did you power through and actually get it all done? That would be cool. Hats off to you and yours. Have a great day. Look forward to the next 20 to 11. And then when we get down to 10, it's gonna be Tofu and I battling it out. Will he pick the same things I did? Will I, or will his top 10 even be on my top 40? I know there'll be some crossover, but I guarantee you there's a couple that I didn't pick. Not even anywhere on my list. We'll see how it goes. Let's see if he makes him mad. He only gets mad when I give him a take that, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> Have a great day. See you in the next list.